first of all, hello everybody, and welcome to the Special Hearts of Iron 4 stream. We are playing with La Résistance today, the new DLC, that is coming out on the 25th, which I believe is Tuesday? Tuesday! is when that resistance is going to be available. This stream is sponsored by Paradox, and if you do exclamation mark hoy4 or what game in the chat, you can get a link to pre-order La Resistance today, which is a huge honking expansion. Huge one. I think okay, man the guns felt incredibly transformative. Um and I really credit it for the fact that I've been obsessed with Hoy um for the past little while again, like to an extent that I don't think has ever happened before. I think Man the Guns is really responsible for that. However, I think there's more stuff in this expansion than in Man the Guns. Man the Guns still may end up, in the long term, being the most transformative expansion, but I think this is the biggest one to date. We're going to go through some of the features here in a second and see what that looks like. <laughs> I want Quill to drink wine today. Well, we may have to do that, although I may wait until uh, technically the, the, the work portion of the stream is over because uh, we may have to do that. But I even baked bread yesterday. Oh, I could do everything. French, fresh bread and wine. It would have been just perfect, wouldn't it? I think so. Uh, thank you very much for the bits, dust in space. Also, we got a hype train going on. Mmm. So I did a uh, <laughs> quills on the start stream. I know. I, I should have. Oh man. If I would realized it ahead of time, I would have found myself some sort of uh, trench coat or something. But I don't know if we've got one in the house. Maybe, maybe my winter jacket actually. I could probably... Okay, it's going to be a Twitter challenge. I'm going to come back to you guys on this one. Um, I'm going to cosplay the uh, the cover art is what's going to happen. Um, I was in the middle of saying something I don't remember. Oh, right. So for this, I did a poll online because we're going to be playing in France. I decided... I mean, it's called La Résistance. We've never done a, a video series for France in Hearts of Iron 4 yet. It is the perfect time for it. Beautiful. And it turns out they have given France a monstrous new national focus tree. So the big things that have gotten new focus trees this expansion is uh, Portugal, which was, I mean, up until now, not a whole heck of a lot going on. Of course, they weren't super involved in World War II, so that, you know, would explain it. But now with their new focus tree, there's a lot of ways they can get involved in many different directions, and we're going to have to do play on that at some point. Spain massively transformed as well with their new I national ideas. Instead of a two-way civil war, now we're probably going to see like a four-way civil war between the nationalists, the, the sort of pure Republicans, I guess, the Carlinists, the anarchists. It depends. There's a bunch of stuff. The, um, I got to say, the paradox stream that, that highlighted Spain was incredibly entertaining, I thought. And then France got a huge new national focus tree. And that's what we're gonna be playing as. We're gonna play on default settings. We're not, we just did the Italy campaign on Elite for this because we got a lot of learning to do. We're only gonna play on regular. We will play with historical AI focuses turned off. So we have no idea what's gonna happen. The big question mark, at the biggest source of variability is probably the United Kingdom. I feel like when you have historical AI focus turned off, it's about maybe 50-50 whether the UK goes fascist or not, uh, or at least not online. So, and that'll, that'll, could uh, dramatically transform things. Let me jump into the game because we're gonna take a look at the focus tree, and then we're gonna talk about the poll that I did to figure out what we're gonna do. I love non-historicals, UK always goes fascist. Yeah, so I mean, again, it's, it might even be more than 50%. Between sort of fascism and non-aligned, it feels like it's quite high when you're playing on, uh, on non-historical, then of course like Canada and India and all the Commonwealth sort of split off, they start doing their own thing, and you get a really interesting set of uh, conditions throughout the world, which is kind of cool. Turn a historical focus on. I mean, <sighs> would people prefer having an on or off for the thing? I feel like if we're gonna go alt history, if we're gonna go monarchist, which is what we're going to do, I feel like we should have a historical AI turned off. Everyone, most people are saying off, and I agree. I think there is value in trying to do a historical run where re is France, you know, stay democratic, become part of the Allies, try to play things as historically as possible, just to sort of play out that story. But that's different. That's, it's, I, think, I think it's the difference between sort of role-playing the history versus experimenting with the what-ifs. And yeah, if we are not playing historical because we're going monarchist, we're not going to like shoehorn the rest of the world into being that either. Let's take a look at the, the tree, the national focus tree. So... France used to have... Uh, France is a, one of the major players in Hearts of Iron. Um, but of the major players, it's one of the few that hadn't gotten a redo of its national focus tree yet. And this thing has gotten fairly big because it was pretty tiny. You could fit most of it on a screen. And now, 
Well, to properly showcase, I should probably show off the new feature that's been added in the 1.9 patch. It's 1.9, right? Yeah, 1. Point or am I getting confused? Oh, it is 1.9. As I say, am I getting confused with Battletech, which also just dropped a 1.9 patch? But no, I've got this uh, sorted out. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, I thought I got a Discord message, but that was just my, my own self-stream announcement. That's good. Um, so, one of the new features is that you can scroll out in Focus Trees now. Oh! And it's kind of valuable, because these trees, that's pretty big. And most of these focuses are 70 days. KSP also dropped 1.9. Now, it's just a popular number, apparently. Most of these are, are long, big involved focuses. There's a lot of um, a lot of branching choices as well. So, like, what you have here... So, on... Okay. Way over here, this is sort of our industrial branch. We'll take a look at that soon. Then we've got a sort of military, like, military technology and development kind of branch over here, which we can't even start rearmament until we've got 12% war support. We only start with 10% war support! France does not feel great about, you know, going to war again um, after WWI. Then we've got the political tree. So the first thing we do is we either form the popular front, so we're sort of unifying all the, the leftist um, factions into kind of one party to be able to win an election, or we can arrive at the nationalist bloc, which is more right-wing, conservative, reactionaries, as well as the monarchists. So that's the first major split that we have to do there. If we stay on this leftist side, um, there's still a lot of different ways to go. I mean, you can go pure communist, but you've got some options. Over on the right, you've got fascism that you can do. So after you revive the National Block, you can go utilize the League. It's Nachos! Hey, Nachos! Can I get a division after me? Also, bread and wine. The only thing that's missing is snail or frog's legs. Came tip before this one. Oh, thank you very much, Cool Man, for pointing that out. I will take a look at that in just a second. We'll try to finish our initial thought here so people can start discussing the politics and chat, and then we'll do some reading. Uh, over the right, we can utilize the leagues, and then there's sort of then two more, you know, again, mutually exclusive branches. This is sort of the fascist y kind of branch, and this is the restoring the monarchy kind of branch. But what's crazy here is that even if you restore the monarchy, it's like. But what flavor of monarch would you like? Because this was a legitimate problem. I've been trying to read up on the history of, like, France through the 1800s and forward and things. And there was, you know, there was a lot of monarchist movement in France, but it was sort of subdivided into, well, at least maybe three different branches of, well, who should be the monarch? Who's the legitimate heir and in what reason and what way? Um, and so that's simulated here in the National Focus Tree. We can get one of the uh, Orleanists. Um, back on the throne, we could... I like it's got legitimate air. This is the Carlist branch, which interacts with Spain in interesting ways, right? Gives us the ability to secure the crown of Spain, so it lets us get a war goal against Spain. But also, if there's a Carlist Spain that is separate, we can actually annex Carlist Spain just as an effect here by unifying our crowns, or two crowns, two countries, and then we make an alliance. Um, that's cool. And then over here, proclaim the Third Empire... Napoleon the Sixth. Napoleon comes back. We've got a Bonapartist once again in charge of France. So even if we go monarchist, which is what we're going to do, which flavor of monarchy do we want? So you guys have a quick little discussion there. Let me go and ch uh, catch up on the uh, contribution to the uh, to the wine and bread fund. Mm -hmm -hmm. Uh, it's from Banana Cabana. Hey, <laughs> nice beret. Viva la resistance. Thank you very much, Banana. And uh, nachos. Yeah, cool man nachos. Uh, frog like I've had uh, snails. We I used to eat those all the time as as a kid. I didn't realize it was a special weird thing. It was just something that we did fairly often. Frog legs I've only had once in my life, and weirdly, it was in South Carolina. Actually, no, hold on. I may have had it a second time when uh, Essentia and I uh, did a vacation in Paris. I might have had it once, but I'm not even sure about that. Everyone wants Napoleon, or the vast majority of people want Napoleon, and I think that is indeed what we're going to do. It's Mostly, chocolate. the big reason that we're probably going to go down the Napoleon branch is just so that we have an excuse to sing some ABBA. Sh sh sibs Sibzen? Shibzen? Sibens? Sibzane? I don't know how to say your name, but I do appreciate your support very much. Thank you very much for that. I give Netflix 15 bucks a month and get more entertainment out of watching your streams. So get some whiskey and chocolate on me. Also, restore Napoleon. Well, thank you very much for that. We're going to work real hard on uh, on that. It's getting warm in here with my lights on and the beret. I want to take it off, but no, I can't do that. That would be inappropriate. So yeah, Avenge Wanderloo does give us the Annex War Goal on Belgium. So right there, a decision's made for us. It was, there was never actually going to be a discussion. 
we had to go down this route. So I practiced a little bit, and in my practice run, things went very well. I was actually able to conquer, actually, all of Spain, the Low Countries, and all of Germany, and then do pretty good for a little while. And then some things may have gone haywire, but uh, hopefully that won't happen after that. So I got a little bit of practice. It's whiskey and chocolate. More whiskey and chocolate? Fletchery, thank you very much! Love your work, Quill. Really hyped about the stream today. Well, so am I. And if you guys have been following, well, if you follow YouTube, obviously, but if you follow Twitter or anything like that, you know that I've been super obsessed with, uh, with all things Hoi for a while here. Okay, let's, um, let's group things up. Let's, let's first, let's take a look at our military. Before we pick anything, well, okay. <clears throat> We're going to do standard tech start, guys. We're going to go basic machine tools. We're going to go construction one. And we're going to go electro electronic mechanical engineering. We're going to have to have a lot of hard decisions when it comes to tech fairly soon. But the first three are pretty obvious. I mean, come on. Well, it looks like we're going to be the bad guys again. We're not going to be the bad guys? I mean, we're just restoring France's natural borders, right? <laughs> and France's natural borders definitely at least got to include Belgium. But probably at least the Netherlands. Germany, Italy, Spain. I mean, you know. It's, it's, it's Napoleon t Part 2, Electric Boogaloo. Okay, our division's over here. So, we are going to start the game with 74 divisions, but of varying capacities. Um, actually, let me, before I go and group the armies, just because we actually have three different infantry with the same icon and two different tank divisions with the same icon, so we're going to go and straighten those out. First, there's the Division d'Infanterie over here, which is 18 combat width. I mean, I love 18 as a number. What a glorious number 18 is. But it's not really optimal, so we may have to make a little adjustment there. So this is um, nine infantry uh, regiments, battalions, whichever. Because um, there's actually some fuzziness there, but I think battalions is probably more, we'd say. Or brigades. No, it's support. Support brigades, and these are battalions? Or the other way around? I always get it mixed up. Anyway, I got nine of these dudes over here for 18 and one support artillery. And then we have the completely different Division Coloniale. Don't be confused. Yes, this has nine, uh, nine brigades. Thank you. Uh, support companies or battalions. It's like, I, can't, I can never think, like, how am I going to ever remember that? Because it's like, I always think battalion, battalion battle, the ones who fight. No, except it's the opposite because they're the support ones. Battalion support somehow. Anyway, brigades. So again, we have we have nine infantry brigades and a support artillery. So very different from the Division d'Infanterie is the Division Coloniale. I mean, don't get these two confused. So we start with these two, um, and they are both being fielded. What I'm going to do, the long-term plan, I'm going to switch this icon to this rook here, which I'm going to use this as my default sort of mainline kind of defensive-y kind of division. So it's probably going to go up. We're, we're going to add one more to get to combat with 20. But I think it's going to just be 10 infantry brigades and, and, and some support companies. But no line artillery or anything like this. This is going to have a ton amount of defense. It's going to have a lot of organization. It's going to be able to hold line force. It won't be very good at attacking because it's not going to have a tremendous amount of soft attack or hard attack. Um, nor will it have a tremendous amount of breakthrough. So they're not going to be good at attacking, but they'll be really good at holding a line. Um, the Division d'Infanterie, we may redo this as... We could consider doing a 7 infantry, 2 artillery um, lineup, which for the longest time was sort of the standard setup. Um, but I have since come to... Um, to now become a believer in the idea that that's not quite enough to push. The 7 infantry, 2 artillery... I had a big discussion about this on Twitter yesterday. Um, I don't think tends to have enough soft attack to be able to consistently overcome well-entrenched divisions. And so what we might do, if we are going to have an attacking infantry division, we might do the 40-width thing. Maybe something like 14 infantry and four artillery or something like that, that should give us enough hard attack, or soft attack rather, to overcome uh, entrenched infantry a little bit more consistently. Of course, ideally, we would do some things with uh, with tanks and things like that. Go seven art to infantry, that would probably uh, smash pretty well. Um, so we're gonna keep the infantry icon on that, the rook here, the uh, uh, brigade, brigade? Actually, don't know how to say that. Um, Colonial over here, which is going to be used for 
um, any sort of lower priority stuff. It's going to be our Coast Guard, so just we have a token presence holding some of our docks in behind. This also might be used as a lot of frontline um, units in places like Africa because we need lots of divisions for huge front lines, but they can be fairly thin divisions because they don't need to, they're not going to necessarily fight like the, the most potent enemy forces, plus there's going to be supply issues and things. So we're going to do that. I like to switch this to a pawn icon. That's what I use, a pawn, a rook, and then maybe the infantry indicator over here. We have our motorized division over here, which is, again, combat with 18. Why? Why? I don't know. Why? I don't know. Anyway, these are motorized infantry. They have a more or less... Uh, oh, can you not open more than one window in this mode? Okay, on a lot of screens you can hold shift to open more than one. But if we look, like, look at the soft attack, right? 69. Nice. 69. Hard attack is 10. Hard attack is 10. Slightly microscopic changes. Um, it does have the recon company as well. This would move fast. It's got the speed of 12 kilometers an hour, but it's not even that potent. It does move real quick, though. Um, and uh, the recon company will probably assist with that. You can see it... Uh, it's effectively canceling out movement penalties like rivers slow but this gives you a bonus to moving across river so it's not quite as slow as it would be so these guys are, are they are going to be speedy they don't necessarily have the biggest punch but it's going to be okay no one here thank you very much again hold on i'm going to catch up your message in a second i'm going to finish this we also have two different variants of our light tank we've got this one here which has two light tank uh brigades and four infantry and another one which is just four light tanks now pure tank divisions have very little organization you can see 10 over here this cannot fight very long however it will have pretty good punch with 144 breakthrough it is really good at attacking can't defend for crap um and uh if if it doesn't overwhelm someone quickly it is going to get booped out of combat but it is going to be there whereas this one here with the infantry has a lot more org um but not as much breakthrough. So we have both of these. This second one over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a different icon. There's a lightning-y kind of tank icon somewhere. Right here. There you go. I'm going to use that just to differentiate these two. Um, all right. So now we have got, uh, we've got icons. We also have the infantry over here, which is 24 combat width. Ils sont fous, ces français. Um, and then we have our cavalry divisions here, four cavalry and a recon on that too. I mean, it's got speed at 6.4. It is, it is something. Okay. Let me check the, uh, contribution to the, the wine and baguette fund. We have from no one here's what he appears says, I'm disappointed. He didn't catch my French bread joke. Uh Oh, you must need more caffeine. Will we need a French press today? Boy, French bread joke. Oh, bring the pain to all corners of the world. Bring the pain, the pain, pain, pain. Paying his bread in French. Oh my god, that's terrible. I love it. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I didn't catch it. I do have French. We have three French presses in the house. Yeah, it was really bad. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and sort of split things based on what kind of guys they are, just so we get a bit of an idea as to what our loadout is. Um, move our sort of pawns over there. Um, and our that. Okay, so now what we have effectively teal here what's left here is 19 divisions 19 fast divisions is what we've got some combinations of tank cavalry and the motorized are they the most punchy maybe not but they are quick and early on in the war these guys are going to be fairly competent um we've got yeah our sort of rooks over here they're just supposed to hold the line and be defensive which is fine what we can probably do is do something like throw them in the Maginot line um over here tons of art of infantry we're gonna want some down here but i think what i'll do is i'll take half this this infantry which are the same as the rooks really you know what literally the same thing right now let me just switch you to this boom so, literally the same thing one as the other so let me merge you up, then I'm going to take you, and I'm going to take half of you and do this. So we're going to have 14 on the Maginot line. We're going to take 14 maybe here, throw them down in the Alps. Bye. With our four mountain divisions, we're also going to throw them in the Alps over here. Well, on, on the line with Italy. Bye. I don't think we need this many guys, especially early on. I mean, there's a good chance Italy simply won't be in the war. So I'll go and, and add a little bit more up here. And then with our fast divisions, the plan is just, just to park them for now totally not suspiciously on the border here with Belgium. 
Don't don't worry about it. Don't think about it. It's, it's okay. We don't we don't have to do anything here. Please, all you, what you should do is protect the border from Belgium. Well, we don't have to protect the Belgian border if there is no Belgium. I'm just saying. Mortarizer soldiers that ate frogs legs. Nice. Um, let's take a look at our civilian factors before we get into the good stuff, i.e., national focus and maybe the, the espionage stuff. Let, let's keep going with a little housekeeping. Construction. So, what is our factory situation right now? Um, we have eight military factories. That ain't much. We have 33 civilian factories, but 14 of them are being eaten by consumer goods, which is really rough. What I think we're going to do, I think we are going to start off, sort of typical, first year or so of the, of the game, building civilian factories. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two more to Ile de France over here, and we'll do three more in Picardy. We'll just bring them up. Um, so these are the 80% uh, infrastructure. We might build some in uh, Nord Pas de Calais. We'll see. We'll, we'll let these build. We'll check our timing. I think we will want a few more civilian factories. Actually, I kind of think we might do something like this. So a total of 10 new civilian factories being built up here. That's going to be a good start. And then after that is almost certainly going to be hardcore military factory going. Adding factories to Paris. What is this, cannon run? Move of the fall Fran false France called Belgium. Yeah, I agree. Um, what we can probably plan is a teal here, which is our attacking force into Belgium. And I think I'm going to do, because we don't need this many on the Maginot, I'm going to grab five of these guys. Paris. Maybe, if I actually click properly. Thank you very much. And I'm going to throw you in here. So we have a full 24 division army. Um, although, I say full 24. We can actually do better than that. Hang on a sec. Let's organize everyone to an army group for now. Let's get a field marshal. So we've got four field marshals to choose from. Wagan, Georges, Gamelin, and Besson. Um, two level threes, two level twos. I mean, defensive entrenchment doctrine, promotion cost... Defense and logistics. I mean, we're going to see a lot of this kind of defensive bend. Everyone's kind of got that. We'll take Wagon over here. Sure, that's fine. Um, in terms of our generals, we've got one with an interesting trait. I can't remember where it is. Which one of these is it? One of these... It's whiskey and chocolate. I think has it. I didn't give you the the promotion. One of them has the uh, the thing where you can have more units. You can command thirty at once. I'm probably just missing it. Maybe I did give him give him the promotion, or maybe it's someone I unlocked later. We got some more whiskey and chocolate coming in. No, no one's got it now. I know there's someone who's got it. Name a division after cool, please. Oh, we're going to take a look. Yeah. So, um, it's, uh, what's it called? It's like staff office or... Skilled staffer. Someone must be ready to unlock it or something. Because in my test game, one of my generals had it and he can control 30. I'm like, what? What is this? I've never seen someone get that trait. So, we'll take a look. Mm -hmm. It's cheesy whiskey and chocolate donation. Let's take a look at the whiskey and chocolate, or rather, the wine and baguette contribution it's zapper zen thank you very much the perfect country for this one last week a cheese factory exploded in france there was nothing left but debris <clears throat> you can search for traits when looking at the list nice excellent oh that is cool um all right and then these folks over here these are all our our colonial brigades we may have to use some like in france proper at some point but we will uh we will see about holding off for a little bit. Um, so these are going to be mostly overseas positions. Now, one of the things playing as France, you do start with a lot of stuff all over the place. What's interesting is France, the French sort of considered um, Algeria part of kind of main, like metropolitan France to a certain extent for certain things, which is kind of nifty. Um, I don't know exactly how we're going to organize these guys yet. Like, some might be on the border. Some might get the kind of um, port garrison commands. I mean, we don't have to worry about it quite yet because we're not about to start the war. Uh, that island. Is this us? I think that's part of us. And down here. So that's you guys. And then if we grab some of you and make you into a new group. And... Actually, I should probably Bye. just grab these. That'd be the simplest way of doing it, wouldn't it? 
Okay. Attention. Take you. Merge you in there. Yep. Grab you guys specifically. Uh, which I just realized is... Attention. Not all the colonial type troops. No. Écoutez. You go back over there. It's whiskey and chocolate. Let me do this. Oh my, more whiskey and chocolate. Hold on. Let me grab you guys, throw you in here. There we go. So you're going to kind of guard things over here. Oh, and what I forgot to do is I just want them to guard docks. Oh my gosh. So much wine and bread fund. Uh, you two as well. You're just here to guard dockyards. Okay, you need 10 for that. That's going to be fine. And then... Right, you guys are going to shuffle around and move around. And that's going to be okay. Don't think I can root for Quill in this run. Playing France in the Paradox game is like proper trading with L's and the F. Well, playing as France in Hearts of Iron is a little different, right? In any of the other Paradox games, it's like, oh yeah, you got to play on easy mode. But here, maybe a little less so. Could make the guillotine on Cheese Joke Maker? What? Uh, all France today is regarded, uh, regarded as metropolitan France. The place is in Caribbean France. The place is in the Pacific France. French Guiana? France. <laughs> Uh, we got some free military factories, so what we're going to do is we're definitely going to up our infantry equipment production to start off with. Um, and probably a fair bit more. We have a huge deficit in infantry equipment. Uh, we definitely are going to have to train some more just regular troops. We have so little military infrastructure. Right now, we can't really afford to branch into fancy things. We've got a little tank production going on, which we will maintain, especially since we have a shortfall of that. So our current divisions aren't fully equipped right now, which is a little unfortunate. Okay, national focuses. So the way I see it, there's probably two different ways we want to start, right? And this is always the case, really, with virtually every country in Hawaii. Do you start by improving your industry right away, or do you start by going up your political tree right away? It really depends on what's there, and it's going to be a tough decision. Yes, we want to go up the Napoleon branch, which is excellent, but here's one of the issues. If we want to go and reinstitute a monarchy, we have to go down this branch. So first we have to do revive the national block, 70 days. Utilize leaks, 70 days. The Council of Rabiet, 70 days. Revise the Constitution, 70 days. And then we actually have to wait. So at this point, we've taken up uh, 280. So I mean, yeah, basically 5 times 70 is basically a year, right? So we're taking up about four-fifths of the year to get to this point. Now, we've gotten a few things along the way. A change in popularity, eh. Uh, we've lost stability, increased the popularity of fascism and online, eh. Revive the National Bloc. Okay, well, we get a new leader who gives us a little bit more political power. Okay, so basically, we've gotten all the way to here. We've spent four-fifths of a year, and really the only thing we truly have to show for it at this point is the fact we get a little bit more political power, um, which isn't terribly exciting. But we revise the Constitution, and then for one year, our stability is going up week by week. That's amazing! But then we can't go any further than that, because the next step, rep repeal the Law of Exile, requires that we have finished constitutional revision so that's why even though these first four steps aren't terribly potent and this is by the way going to be a huge theme with france it's a big tree but a lot of it is like france you are messed up you are not a good country so it might be a good idea to rush to this so we can start the 365 days with constitutional revision so then we can you know go and finish this a little bit sooner and then so get to here and then swing over and maybe do the um the industry but of course, that means we don't get to do the industry right away. Which means we don't get an extra research slot. Or another research slot. Which is normally one of the most important things. Can you really delay? It hurts, doesn't it? It's like the Great Depression modifiers in the US. Yeah, same thing. It's like a broken country. Um, so yeah, so I don't know. I... I what we can probably do, maybe we go down, do we want to go just down the left-hand side over here, get the first research slot? We can delay the second one, which, because it, because of certain things, the second one we probably don't want to beeline. So, the French tree is a little bit weird. So, most trees, what you get is you get a thing that you pick it, it adds building slots and factories. Here it doesn't. Invest in Metropolitan France adds four building, building slots, Brittany and Center, but no factories. But then you get to industrial expansion, which is add civil two civilian factories to states previously invested in. So presumably, I think it's two in each state. Um, so we can go metropolitan France into here. The other thing we can do um, is if we get all these guys, we can then go colonial industry, which adds...